It's all the same stuff being played. Safe to say that standard solved, I can't take another day. How long, how long must I sing this song till bands make it gone today? How are you doing, folks? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome back to another Meta Monday. Hope your weekend was swell. There was a ton of magic played over the weekend, and we are going to start by diving on into some metrics that are not particularly surprising to myself or anybody else that's kind of been dialed into the format and keeping track of what's going on. Um, so to start here, we've got the tournament metrics for uh, the Red Bull untapped event, which had over 800 players in it this weekend. So looking at the archetype breakdown here, we had something very predictable happen um, with had something very predictable happen with uh, the metagame from the first week that we looked at. And what's predictable is that the win rates of both the aggressive decks in the format pitched themselves off of a cliff. They, they fell off completely. So mono white, in fact, just to draw a comparison, so this is this is from the first week of standard. Mono white had almost a 59% win rate, and mono green had a 54% win rate. And we compare that to this week. Mono white is down to about a coin flip, and mono green is down almost 6% as well. And this is to be expected, right? Like, decks that are proactive are always the best deck in an unknown format by a good margin. And then once the interactive decks, in this case, the various blue-red decks, know what they're up against, they can change a few cards appropriately. And very predictably, you know, people were talking about how, you know, Thalia is going to hold these blue-red decks in check. And that just really couldn't be further from the truth. Um, the blue-red decks had to become a little bit less greedy and they had to adapt to be able to interact with these white decks more efficiently. They had to do something. The blue-red decks had to start doing something different than they had previously been doing in other seasons. And once they appropriately started doing something different, they just kind of started dumpstering the competition. So um, one thing that's helpful to look at, too, in addition to the overall win rates, is we've got an archetype matrix here where we can see, we can see that mono-white, actually had a losing record in a pretty significant sample size against Is It Epiphany. It had a losing record against uh, Orzhov Control. It had a barely positive record against Is It Control. It had a negative record against uh, against Is It Dragons. One thing to note here is that um, Is It Control is blown out Snow versus Not here. So the white deck did have a much better matchup against the is it control with the snow, snow variation so these two getting lumped together and honestly honestly these metrics make me even a little bit more sad about the format because i had been optimistic that like maybe the is it control variations could push the is it epiphany decks out of the format but like the fact that the white aggro deck is miserable again. And honestly, this highlights just how toxic specifically Epiphany is in my mind. Because the white aggro decks can actually keep up with and punish the non-Epiphany decks in the format. But they can't punish the decks that are going over the top with extra turn cards. Yeah, and like this, these metrics are kind of deceptive, right? So like you look at this and you see percent of the field and you're like, oh, mono white aggro is the largest deck in the field by a lot, right? But then, like, you dig deeper and you're like, okay, is it Epiphany's 11%? Is it Control's 5.5%? Is it Dragon's is 5%? Is it Control Snow is 3.5%? So this is, this is what? So this is 11, and then another 11 almost, so 22, and then this is 25. And then that doesn't count, uh, there's some Grixis Epiphany and stuff in here that are another 1 and 2%. So, like, Blue Red X is almost 30% of the decks that people are registering, which is, you know, 50% more or 10% more of the total than, than mono, mono White is. 
think green is very good. It is, yeah. So going back to the matchup matrix, um, green aggro's actually been having kind of a hard time here. It's got a shit matchup against mono white. It's got a mediocre matchup against control. Um, and actually, one thing that's really interesting, this is a this is a really interesting dynamic from meta, from a metagame perspective, from like a game theory perspective, is that mono green aggro is kind of the opposite of mono white in that it's got really good matchups against the two epiphany decks, but these are the only things that are propping its win rate up a little bit to even make it close to close to good, right? Because like mono green is bad against white, it's bad against Orzhov control, and it has bad matchups against the is it control decks too. So the the is it control variations are good against green, bad against white, and the is it epiphany variations are the opposite. They're bad against white but good against green. Which and honestly, the fact that the green aggro decks are good against epiphany while the white disruptive decks are not really hammers home that thing I've been talking about for months now before Vow even released, which is that you can't beat the Epiphany decks by being interactive and disruptive. It just, it doesn't work. The only way to beat the Epiphany decks is what the green aggro deck is doing, which is just fucking killing them. The, re the reason why the green aggro deck has a good epiphany matchup is because all of its dorks are just so thick that the is it epiphany deck can't interact with them profitably before before they get they get set up. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just like like this these these stats here between this row and this row really just hammer home an incredible amount of validation for my game my game theory in terms of understanding magic to see to see it depressingly play out in a very predictable manner just like this this is what we called I called would happen and it's played out exactly how I expected it to play out in just the worst possible way. I desperately wanted to be wrong, chat. I was not wrong. This is I am frequently wrong, just ask my wife. This this is not one of those instances, though. Alright, what does the untapped data look like? Let's take let's take a peekaboo here. Loading, loading. Something that's interesting is that uh, if you so this is standard best of one. If you look here, and is it is not particularly popular in standard best of one. And then I change this drop down and I change it. I change it to best of three. And is it turns goes from four percent to twenty one percent. 21% just is it epiphany. This this doesn't count the Grixis turns variations down here at three and a half percent. This doesn't count. Does this, this count dragons? That's actually a good question. Does this have the dragons variations in here? This does include some build with gold span dragons, it looks like. Um Untap does a little bit more aggressive lumping things in together, in my experience. All right, uh, and let's peek at let's peek at historic hot quick. People ask, people ask about that, and I forget to look at it sometimes. This actually surprises me a little bit. The Selesnia, the Selesnia, uh life gain deck is the the most popular popular deck here. Worth putting it to bronze plus. I don't believe any of these metrics really change that much when we do it right yeah they're they're about they're about the same i can i can jump back to standard for a minute and show you that too yeah they're, they're about like this went up it actually went up a little bit oh no oh no yeah it went up it went up like a really it went up a very small amount but not not that much so like Green, white, budget, life gain, budget. So that's a good question. 
Yeah, I'll be interested to see. So, this coming weekend is the Mythic Championship Pro Tour Invitational, whatever we're calling it these days. Yeah, I think you're right that Heliod's like the only Mythic in the main deck. I'm, kind of, I'm, I'm interested to see if this Selesnya combo deck can put up numbers at an actual, an actual tournament or not. Because in my experience on the ladder, this deck, like, it's obviously got a good win rate listed here, but, like, I wonder what the matchup matrix looks like, for example, of Selesnya combo versus this. Also, something that's interesting to note is this... I wonder if this, this, does the Jun Sacrifice change that much? It doesn't, actually. So this number here is actually the highest I have seen Jun Sacrifice on the ladder since we've been looking at ladder metrics. In fact, something I've talked about a lot is that I felt like Jun Sacrifice is really incredibly unplayed on the ladder or underplayed on the ladder. For a long time, this was like sub 5%. And I wonder if the hundreds of people that are preparing to play in the Pro Tour, jamming a bunch of decks that they think are better is potentially uh, potentially increasing this this play rate metric. Actually, we can, we can look at the trends down here, actually. God, untapped is great. So this is win rate over time, popularity over time. So, yeah, so you can see Jun Sacrifice was what? 7%? Kind of floats floats around around there and then eventually pops pops up. All right, is there anything stats related for historic? I'll throw up best of one here for a second. Is there anything um, historic related that people people historic or standard that I didn't talk about that people would like to see? Any questions, comments, or concerns? Yeah, they banned they banned memory lapse and just got control disappeared. It's great. It's big a big part of why historic has been fun is because uh just guy disappeared. All right. I'm going to call that a wrap at 12 at almost 13 minutes then.